Let's do this thing. How to land more records. This is like the most asked question I get. We ask ourselves this question every day because it seems like this never ending uphill battle. And what I'm gonna share with you today, once again, having uh, amassed billions of streams, a bunch of big records that have come out, helped other producers do the same thing. We've learned a thing or two, and I'm here to show you what we've learned. So I wanna go through the basically typical expectation of landing a record and what most people kind of take that as. First and foremost is they make, you know, like three or five beats or loops a day. That's super common. And then they expect they'll just send the beat to an artist, they'll respond and let you know they're reporting ASAP. This never happens. Artist records and sends a song back. This almost never happens. And then the artist releases releases an album and the music they recorded with you four weeks ago comes out. You're paid properly and on time by the label. Um, is how most people think it would go. And this just couldn't be further from the truth. The only accurate part of this is usually this part right here. You make three to five beats a day. So I'm over-exaggerating. You know when they do those really bad commercials where they show you like Im improperly using a sponge and then they show this new sponge that's so amazing? Right? It's the same thing. Uh, okay, here's the reality, right? You make three to five beats a day unless B-Block is hitting, but in the early days of your career, you really shouldn't have any B-Block. First thing, you want to send your beats and loops, but you don't know how to get in contact with producers or artists. And you know, you want to send it to Drake and Kendrick and J. Cole and Keem and this guy and this guy, and you just don't know what to do, right? And so you do the first thing most people do at this point. You go to like genius.com, you start researching who produced some of your favorite songs, you track down their social media, maybe you find their email on like Reddit or some shit, and then you just start spamming. And you're not really getting a response. Uh, you usually give up too after like two or three times of doing that because it turns out it sucks not being responded to, right? Uh, you follow the artist, you're following their engineer, the managers, the producers, A&Rs, literally anybody you think who is connected, but nobody is acknowledging your music or your response, which makes you feel pretty defeated. And so after doing that, you wake up the next day, you go, you know what, I'm going to make three more bait. You go, you know what, I'm going to make three or five more beats. And after you make those, this is what I call the repeating cycle. You want to send out these beats you just made, but you don't know how to get in contact with people. You go through, you research some more people, you don't get responses, you get really frustrated and defeated, you make three to five more beats the next day. And this right here, literally I, I would say makes up like 90% of most musicians. Now the next part, uh, because you're making three to five ideas every day, your music's actually getting a lot better, uh, but you have the same issue, it's just sitting on your hard drive. And so once again, right, it kind of goes all the way back to this repeating cycle of how the hell do I get my music to be heard. Here's a problem. Most people that DM me and say, hey man, how do I get my music heard by more people, I go to their Instagram and they either have a like blacked out Instagram profile picture, um, we have no mutual followers, maybe one or two, and they don't ever show their face online. And if I go to your Instagram, you just have like the classic black screen recording of you playing a beat or a loop or something like that. And it's like, tag future in this. That literally makes up 90% of the people that reach out to me that go, hey man, I can't figure out why I can't work with this person or no one is responding to me. Or they have no posts at all. And that, like, I, if you can't understand that not having any posts is hurting you, then I don't really know what to tell you. So once again, this dives back into you're frustrated and you do the same thing. Are you, are, are you starting to understand kind of this repeating cycle of you get frustrated, you try to find people to reach out to for like 5, 10, 20, 30 minutes, and then you just go back to the norm, the comfort, which is, I'm just gonna make more music. Literally, most people. Now we go to uh, Steven Schaefer's Instagram. Uh, Steven's been with my company Splitmind since 2020, and the first things I told him, post your face online. I remember when he joined, it had been maybe like a week or two, and I called him when I was back home in the Bay Area, and I said, dude, 
post your face online today or I'm gonna kick you off the team. And I was exaggerating, I wasn't really gonna do that. But at the time, he's like 14 years old, he's like, ah, I'm gonna do it. So he does it and ends up being his most engaged post at this point. He had some sick beats on there, he had like a sound kit or two on there. He had some cool stuff on there. But that by far crushed the engagement on anything else on his page. And I remember him calling me the next day and being like, bro, I can't believe what's going on. This is insane. I, so many people are hitting me up and they're reaching out to me and blah, blah, blah. The next thing we did is I had him remove a lot of screen recordings. Not all of them, but he had a good amount, you know, like six, maybe nine, 10, 12, whatever of them. And I had him post more shit of him and maybe some stuff he's worked on or, or a different visualizer, just something that broke it up so that it wasn't just the same squares with the same thing. Uh, next thing was I worked on uh, mutual followers with him. So obviously when he joined, I introduced him to a bunch of people. When he announced he joined, a bunch of people followed him. And then from there, he's a really smart kid. So he went out and figured out how to get follow back from people or get in with this person or get in with that person. And then he dropped sound kits on drumify.com, which is our sounds marketplace. You can go check out. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Um, and what that did is he built his face card. He removed all of the non-branding stuff because to brand yourself with a sound is possible but very hard to compete uh, in the initial stages. Worked on his mutual following and then he dropped sound kits. So he built his brand, dropped sound kits. He was able to showcase his sound. People were buying that and by nature of people going to drumify.com, they'd go, who's Steven Schaefer? They would then funnel back to his Instagram. It would look all pretty and whatever else. And then from there, uh, they would see maybe he has some mutual followers or whatever it was, right? It was all just selling points. And so for you, if you're watching this video and your Instagram looks more like this, I know it sounds redundant, but I promise you it works. And it's gonna really hurt your feelings when you figure out that there is no magical moment or magical thing you do. It's a hundred little tiny things that most people aren't willing to do. So. You start working on your brand, you clean up your page, you treat it like a business card. I always tell people, right? Your Instagram is the new age business card. And so when you're DMing people, they respond and they give you their phone number or their email or whatever else, right? And so I wanna just reiterate that Steven's a really bright and super talented kid, right? I know when I give him, and he's not a kid, but you know, I'm, I'm unk, so anybody's a kid to me. I know when I give him advice, he's gonna consider it and he'll figure out how to make it his own thing. And that's really important. So if you go through his Instagram timeline, you'll see his attention to brand, him trying to build a community. He has a broadcast channel, he has a YouTube page, uh, he posts reels, everybody comments, and he's found creative ways to showcase his talent. And it's important to talk about this because none of it was an accident, right? You're not gonna go to his page and go, man, like this kid got lucky, because it wasn't that. It was us constantly trying new things, right? Him constantly trying new things. Nine of the 10 things we tried sucking, and then us removing it or archiving it or going, eh, let's do something else. All of that to say that his business card nowadays is super well put together, right? He has a ton of followers. He's got 25,600 followers. Um, has a link tree to his kits and to his streams and to stuff he's produced and whatever else. And if you go on his page and you see his mutual followers, I guarantee you, you'll see a bunch of big hitters in the music industry that follow him back. So now that you're in that space, right? Once someone responds to your DM, it doesn't matter if it's a producer or an artist, you just start flooding them with music. And here's what's gonna happen. They're either going to react or they're not gonna respond at all. And most people get in their head and they just stop reaching out to people after one to three attempts of just sending stuff without a response. And I don't blame you because it's a little soul crushing to send some of your favorite stuff and to never get responses or to get a response every quarter. I have an artist, super big artist, I'm not gonna say who, I text them stuff. I usually have to text them about a hundred times in a row and this might be one to two, three beats a day until they finally respond. And then what'll happen is I'll go, they'll respond to like seven different beats and go, this is crazy, this is crazy, I'm, I'm recording this, I'm recording this. Or they'll just send me back a song with nothing else. And I'll go, what the fuck, right? And I had to learn that the hard way because imagine if I did 
this every time. I tried one to three times and then I gave up. What I do now is when I send stuff, is I consider the time of day, right? And I ask you, have you ever considered the time of day when you send ideas to someone? Like, what's the chance the idea was great, right? But they weren't in the mood to record or they just couldn't come up with anything. Or they're at dinner or they're at lunch or they're not by a studio or they're on tour. Like, there are tons of outside forces working against you and that's where consistency is really gonna trump everything, right? You keep sending. Because if I text an artist 100 times without a response, I understand they're popular and busy. My job is to increase the chances of us working. So I constantly stay at the top of their mind and at the top of their inbox because I keep sending them stuff. And so here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna send them stuff. They're gonna recognize it, that whether they're on tour or busy or whatever it is, right? Then when they go to the studio three weeks from now and they see that I've just kept sending them stuff, I've kept sending them stuff, I've kept sending them stuff, they're gonna go, damn, this guy doesn't quit. They're gonna open it up they're gonna think about the beats I sent them. They're gonna open it up, they're gonna go in the studio, they're gonna make some ideas. And they may or may not even communicate to me that they're doing this. And 95% of the time, they're not gonna communicate that. Which, to this day, we still struggle with this idea of like, fuck man, like so-and-so's not responding, what should I do? And then out of nowhere, it never fails. They'll send a beat or a link to something, or they'll be like, yo, send the stems for this, or my manager's gonna hit you, or something of that nature. And so, the reality, and this is the math for us, is like 95% of the songs you even work on will never come out. So how do you ensure you get more releases? Well, you have to send more ideas to more people and more often. And I know this sounds really simple and one of those duh things, but so why aren't you doing it, right? Why aren't you thinking about your Instagram as your business card? Why aren't you figuring out how to clean it up and make it more enticing and make people think, damn, this kid's cool, or this shit's hard, or I can actually, I see this person's face so I can actually like relate to that person. They're not just like a random black screen on my page. They have posts, I can see stuff they've worked on. I can hear how good they are at their music. Why don't you do all these things? Why don't you constantly send people ideas? And here's the funny part, right? This, this is the crushing blow for most people. I'm actually gonna put that right here. I'm gonna put crushing Blow. Uh, boom. There we go. The crushing blow. Artist announces an album and you have no idea if you're on it or not. You've been sending ideas nonstop. Sometimes they respond, sometimes they don't. You hit them to see if you're on it, you don't get a response. The album releases, you go through it uh, Thursday night, 9 p.m., at least if you're LA time. You hear every single song, pain. You're not on it, you didn't make it. And you can't stand the pain, you become depressed, right? You just stop sending. Whether it's for a week, forever, it doesn't matter. You, you just stop the consistency. You ask yourself, did I just waste my time? That's most people's thoughts. And the truth is the music industry quite literally feels impossible at times because there's no blueprint. There's no, oh, this is really obvious. I must do this in this situation. Or, oh, I got paperwork. What should I ask for? That's why I built this community. Because when I was going through all this shit and trying to figure it out, and I'm still learning things every single day, I'm like, where the fuck do I look to? Who do I hit up for this situation? How much should I ask for? And here's the great part. I took a beating for everybody in this fucking chat so that you don't have to. And yeah, technically, you're still gonna have to go through some shit. And that's good, it's good for your character. But the next time you're trying to land a record with an artist, or the next time you're trying to build your brand, or you're trying to make more money on a song, or you don't know how much your publishing should be on a record, or you don't know how to register, whatever it is, I promise you I've been through it because I'm 10 years into music and I'm still here and I'm thriving and surviving year over year. So this is a tough one. Most times you're not on the album, even though you did all the other steps. And so you go, well, what the fuck is the point? And the point is, if you love music and you want to make an impact, you keep keep doing it. I love music. I want to keep being a part of it. And the crushing blows suck. Uh, we just charge it to the game. But man, when a song comes out, it is that much more special to us because we know what it took to get there. And so just going back, most people, they just get stuck in this repeating cycle of they make three or five beats a day. They want to send it to somebody. They don't know how to get a hold of someone. And then they research, they don't get any responses, they give up, they go back to make three to five more beats the next day. And they just keep doing that over and over and over again. And then occasionally, right, they get, they get lucky, they get a response. 
and the music might come out, but then they have no idea how to do the business, right? No clue how to negotiate the biz. And this matters because if you're going to spend the next three to six months or whatever, however long it is trying to work with an artist and then they hit you up and they say, hey, we're going to give you two grand for this beat. And you're like, damn, that's crazy. I've never seen two grand in my life. And it's a major artist. And later on in life, you realize you could have gotten a $10,000 fee like we do or $15,000 fee like we do, plus great publishing and master royalties and half recoupable or non recoupable or your lawyer made sure you're all protected or whatever it is, right? Once you finally get a song, most people are so obsessed with trying to land the record that they don't even think about the business. And this is where I get really passionate because most people get taken advantage of in the music business. I got taken advantage of many times. I have lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. I have been taken advantage of so many times. I've been stabbed in the back so many times. And guess what? My experience is not exclusive to me. Anybody who is successful in the music business has been stabbed in the back multiple times or done this for somebody and got robbed X amount of money or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. So the first time I ever had a major song come out, I got paid. Actually, I didn't get paid. I was supposed to get paid 500 bucks, which is shit. But I was like, damn, 500 bucks as I'm sleeping in my car. And the next time I got a thousand bucks and I literally got like two and a half percent publishing. And the funny thing is, is that that song to this day actually pays me kind of well considering I have such a small percentage of the publishing. And had I known better and fought for much more, that song would have literally 5x, 10x how much money I would have made on it. So that's it. This is my general guide of how to land more records. And now I'm going to go and create a course on how to better build your brand because everything I'm talking about is a little duh and a little obvious and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it.